This is part 108 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the power and use of over clause in SQL Server. The over clause combined with partition by is used to break up table data into partitions. We have the syntax here. First, we specify a SQL Server function. We can use any of these functions, sum, min, max, etc. And then we use the over keyword followed by that partition by and then by whatever columns we want to partition that table data. We have an example here. Let's say we have employees table and within that table we have gender column. So here we are using the count aggregate function over partition by gender. So this is basically going to tell partition the employees table data by gender column. So it's going to divide that employee's data into two partitions, male and female. And then this count aggregate function is applied over each of those partitions, meaning we will get count of female and male employees. Let's look at this in action. So here we have our employees table. Here is the gender column. Now what we want to do is based on this table, we want to write a query which is going to give us aggregated data by gender column. So we want the count of female and male employees. Similarly, we want to find out what is the average salary for female employees and male employees. And similarly, their min and max salaries. So at the moment, notice we have got four female and six male employees. Now we can very easily achieve this using a simple group by query. We want the data to be aggregated by gender column. So we are using group by on the gender column. And to get the totals for genders, we are using the count function. To get the average, we are using average. To get minimum of salary, we are using min. And to get the max, we are using max. Okay, A simple group by query. I have this exact same query already typed here. So when we execute this, we get the result that we expect. So straightforward. So the data that we see in the result set is aggregated data. Now, what if we want, along with that aggregated data, we also want non-aggregated values like name and salary. So if you look at this aggregated data, notice that we have four female employees and six male employees. Now in the result set right here, we have the names and salaries of individual employees. That's, you know, name and salary is not aggregated. Okay, so what we want is this non-aggregated values along with these aggregated data. For all female employees, look at that, the grand total, I mean the gender total is four. For all male employees, it is six. And average um, salary for female employees is 5375, so it's the same for all female employees. Similarly, 5000 is the average salary for male employees. So the aggregated data is repeated for each employee. So we want aggregated and non-aggregated data. Now the first thing that comes to our mind is, well, why don't we use name and salary column in the select list? If we do that, since this is a group by query, and name and salary are not in group by clause, and we are not using any of the aggregate functions on those two columns, so we will get this error. So it's saying employees.name. So name column is coming from employees table. So column employees.name is invalid in the select list because it's not contained in either an aggregate function or in the group by clause. Okay, let's actually look at that in action. So if I try and include name comma salary columns and then if we try to execute this query we are going to get exactly the same error that we have seen on the slide. So one way to achieve this result is by including all these aggregations in a subquery and then combining that subquery with the outer query. Let's actually look at that in action. So what I'm going to do is take this subquery. So when we execute this, we get um, in our average, min, max salaries and the count aggregated by gender. So I'm going to put this in a subquery. So let's turn this into a subquery. And let's call this genders, okay? And then I'm going to use an outer query. So from the outer query, we want the name of the employee, we want their salary, and we also want their gender. And we want that from employees table. So I'm going to join this outer query with the subquery. So let's use inner join. So we're joining employees with genders. So we need to specify the join condition. So on genders.gender, 
So the common column between employees table and this genders result set is gender. So genders.gender equals employees.gender. All right, so what do we want in the result? We want name, salary, gender. We want gender totals, average salary, min salary, and maximum salary. These will come from our subquery because that's what contains our aggregation. So when we execute this, we should get this result. So what I'm going to do here is use this genders result set, and it has got gender total. Similarly, genders dot average salary and genders dot minimum salary genders dot maximum salary all right let's go ahead and execute our query now we get an error and it says ambiguous column name gender so if you look at this gender column it's present both in the employees table and this genders result set so we'll have to tell from where we want that column we could either use employees table or this genders result set it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this query I'm going to use employees table alright so let's execute this query now and look at the result this is exactly what we see on the slide all right, but look at the amount of code we have to write to produce this simple result set. Now, it'll be much easier if we use over clause with partition by. Let's look at that query now. So what do we want with the result set? We want, actually, I'm going to make a copy of this. So we want name, salary, gender, from employees table. Now, along with the gender, we want gender total, average salary, min and max salaries. So, to get gender totals, I'm going to use the count function. And I'm going to specify a column name here, count of gender. We will use the over keyword, over, and then followed by open parenthesis, close parenthesis, partition by gender column. So what is this going to do? This is going to partition this employees table data by gender. So we will have two partitions, male and female, and then this count function will be applied for each of those partitions. So we are going to get count of male and female employees. And let's give this column an alias. Let's call it genders total. So when we execute this, look at what we get. We get name of the employee, salary, gender column, and gender totals. Four female employees and six male employees. Now, getting average salary, min salary, and maximum salary, it's pretty much identical. So I'm actually going to make a copy of this. We, I'm going to now use the average function, but we want the average of salary column. So average of salary over partition by gender, and I'm going to call this AVG salary. Okay, so similarly, let's go ahead and do the same thing for min and max. So minimum of salary, and let's call the column min salary, and here it's going to be max salary, and the function that we are going to use is max. All right, let's get rid of this last comma. Now when we execute this query, look at that. We get exactly the same result, but look at the amount of code that we have to write. This query is also easier on the eyes. It's very easy to understand. So partition the table data by gender column and then apply these aggregate functions which you know will produce the result that we want. So here is our over with partition by query. Thank you for listening and have a great day.